All right. Well, hello, everybody. And I want to thank the organizers for the kind introduction and the opportunity to speak today about medley, uh, the music of managing heart failure. I have no uh, relevant disclosures to this presentation. Well, as you've been hearing today, heart failure is an epidemic, uh, sort of terrifying words, but words that we, we still have a tendency to, to use when describing heart failure. There are about a million Canadians who are living with heart failure. If you're honest and admit to being over the age of 40, you have about a one in five lifetime risk of developing heart failure. It's a profoundly devastating disease for patients. And if you think about the first year after the diagnosis, patients will spend on average almost one month in hospital managing heart failure. The outcomes from heart failure remain poor with an average life expectancy of about 2.1 years. And hopefully some of the new drug discoveries that have happened uh, and been implemented over this past one to two years will impact that. But the cost is enormous. Um, in dollars, it's between two and $3 billion a year. But in terms of patient cost and caregiver cost, we often say that one in two Canadians have been touched in some way by heart failure. This is the current paradigm of heart failure. You would have seen Sarah Goodland's slide in previous presentations. And it, it, it's basically the diagnosis happens and patients go along for some period of time where we provide these episodes of care where the patients come in and they may get prognostic testing, have medications adjusted, and then be rebooked depending on the severity of their illness in three months or in six months. Uh, and we provide these episodes of care, but the challenge is conceptually, I'm sure you can appreciate that not all patients when they come in for that routine visit will be sick. And in the way that we provide episodes of care, we may often miss these severe episodes of heart failure because they just don't happen to happen when we're seeing the patient. And so we got to thinking about this, right? Like how do we actually keep patients out of hospital? We know rehospitalization rates are very high, about one quarter of patients in a month almost half the patients will be rehospitalized at one year. And we know that the mortality risk goes up tremendously with each hospitalization, such that by the time you've had your fourth hospitalization for heart failure, your life expectancy can be measured in about six to eight months. So how do we keep patients out of hospital? How do we keep patients safe? And in thinking about how to do this and how we manage patients, we got thinking about how patients manage themselves and how can we actually uh, improve patient self-care behavior to make them part of the team to keep them out of hospital. So in the early days, circa 1998, this is what we used to do. We used to create a, a graph and we would have the patient, Mr. Smith, we'd say, Mr. Smith, first thing in the morning, buck naked, get on the scale and write it down. Put your robe on, wander into the kitchen, have a look at the graph that's been posted on your fridge, see where your weight is, and then run across to see what your diuretic recommendation is for that day, whether or not we have metolazone or we might have had uh, some potassium supplements. But we would individualize this to the patient. And this was what we did. Uh, it was a LASIK sliding scale, and it was actually very effective. And we got thinking about it and recognized that, you know, there's that thing, it's called the internet. Um, and wouldn't it be really interesting if we could actually take the piece of paper and change it into something that was on the internet? And so we created this heartfunction.com with a heart failure clinic app uh, where the patients would log on every morning. They would enter their weight, their blood pressure, their heart rate, and some symptoms. And then we would have our nurse practitioner log in every day and make adjustments for that patient. And it was a really good idea, but it really it didn't work. Um, it was a wonderful failure. And it didn't work because it was too cumbersome for the patient. It took too much time. And from the nursing side, it was incredibly onerous with this information to have to review. So an important failure for us. We got thinking about it a bit more and you realize that cell phones are ubiquitous and the penetration of smartphones uh, also is increasing. It's increasing among the elderly heart failure occurs more as we get older. So it made some real sense here. And I still wish I was the one who had made this quote, but uh, John Cleland did. And it's, it's a great quote, which is enlisting the help of the largest healthcare workforce or the patients. And it was thinking about this and the phone and our success with paper failure on the internet 
that led us to thinking about Medley. And I really need to call out Emily Sito. This was her PhD project. And Joe Cafazo, who's my partner in crime. And really, Medley is a remote patient monitoring platform for multiple chronic conditions. We're going to focus on it for heart failure, where we have uh, the most data. And I really have to give a big shout out to Mary O'Sullivan, uh, who's done a tremendous job moving Medley forward. So if we think about how we manage heart failure, this is a really great way to look at it. This is Lynn Warner Stevenson's work. And we have a patient who takes physiologic indicators, and then that information is transmitted by the patient, historically in telemedicine by the phone. A data would be received, it would be processed, there'd be a nurse there, they would go into the patient's chart or look for what the trends were for that patient. And then they'd have to find somebody in order to act on the information. And depending on who they had to find, it could take longer. So as you move to the right of the screen, those are longer paths to action. You then contact the patient, the therapy plan would be implemented. And so we looked at this and thought, let's work on this side of the map and let's actually replace all of this with a rules-based expert system or a mathematical algorithm, an if this, then that program, where in real time, when the patient has done their measurements, the actual alert goes to the patient with the recommended therapy and the alert goes to the clinical staff as well, all in real time. And this is Medley's algorithm. It's a, it's a decision tree. It's a form of assistant AI. Uh, and it's the same measurements that we had initially on the internet program. So it's your weight and your blood pressure, your heart rate and some sim simple symptom questions. And what Medley does is it analyzes that data and generates self-care feedback messages based on individualized patient thresholds that we do at the time of onboarding. So we onboard what the alerts will be for that patient, for example, their blood pressure that would alert, their weight change or their upper weight target. And we also personalize what the treatment is. Uh, it can handle a limited number of factors. And when we developed it, we developed it to be conservative. So it can generate false positives, but we definitely did not want to miss a patient who wasn't doing well. The feedback that is provided is actionable. So it's personalized, as mentioned, it's set by whoever the clinician is at the time of enrollment. And we can adjust those at the on the dashboard at any given time. Uh, examples of feedback are you're, you're within your normal range, uh, record your measurements again later if you're not feeling well, or as I mentioned, we can actually push uh, a diuretic recommendation. Uh, the clinician dashboard allows us to actually rapidly assess and respond to patients who've alerted. So on my phone, on my smartphone, I have what I call Medley Light, where I actually see a patient's name, how I contact them, why they triggered on the system, uh, what it was that alerted, what the recommendation was. I can look at historic trends, their blood work, um, and their medications. And so it's a very fast way for me to see what's happening. If I need more information, I can link in immediately to the dashboard, which is what Mary and our other nurse coordinators look at, <clears throat> which gives a tremendous amount of information and trends. And because of the way it's set up, the alerts happen immediately and go to the top of the, of the chain. So the most critical alerts are managed the soonest. And it is because of this that Medley is unique. So again, if we come back to this issue of episodes of care, where we were providing care every three months or every six months, what Medley allows now is for a daily episode of care, where we get the information every morning. And not surprisingly, three quarters of the time, patients are actually doing well. And so they get the, the feedback for that. About one quarter of the time, the patient will get a caution alert because their readings are out of range. And that's when we have done the individualized treatment, such as a furosemide dose. Less than 1% of the time, it's a critical alert. And again, this was a, the algorithm was built to be conservative. A critical alert would be syncope, uh, my ICD fired, or the combination, for example, of a low blood pressure and a high weight, because that always concerns us that the patient might be becoming cold and wet. But it is the fact that three quarters of the patients actually have normal feedback that makes Medley unique in the moment and allows us to scale to a totally different level because we don't have to respond when the feedback is normal. So we can focus only on the ones that have caution alerts. Um, and moreover, it allows us to make sure that we're not missing the critical alerts. 
So because of this model of care, we can have one coordinator able to provide up to 300 uh, complex uh, chronic patients their care. And this is totally different than standard telemedicine, which is generally about one nurse to 50 or 70 patients. Because it's so often a normal alert, we don't need to address that. We can focus on caution alerts. We can focus on teachable moments. Um, we can provide the education, the care navigation that's required, and it allows us to scale, which is critical when we think about how many patients there are out there with heart failure. In terms of our outcomes, we did a pragmatic pre and post analysis. So this is looking at patients in our clinic being managed by heart failure doctors versus in our clinic being managed with Medley. And we were able to show a 50% reduction in heart failure related rehospitalization with no increase in emergency department room visits. We also showed a 24% reduction in all cause hospitalization probably because uh, the symptoms were resulting in our nurse coordinator contacting the patient and triaging them for other things that might be important and could also reduce hospitalization. When patients were directed to the hospital, they actually stayed in hospital two days less on average. The thinking there is that we're actually finding them earlier and as a consequence, we can intervene sooner and shorten their length of stay. Patients were very engaged, so we saw a significant improvement in markers of self-care and self-management. Patients told us that it provided peace of mind. It wasn't something that we were putting in between them in clinic, but more an extension of clinic. And the adherence was very high, 73% at 10 months. We also did a randomized trial of remote titration, and we were able to show that in patients that were on Medley alone with in-office titration versus Medley plus remote titration, fewer visits to clinic, not surprisingly, but a shorter time to dose optimization. And critically, at six months, 90% of patients randomized to the medley titration arm were actually on target dose guideline directed medical therapy, and there were no safety issues raised. So this re really led us to believe that we could use medley to help target guideline directed medical care. Right now, we have 700 active patients, uh, not over 900 all time. We have two full-time nurse coordinators for 700 patients and a bit of two other nurses. There are 20 cardiologists that are using the system. We had a tremendous response to COVID-19, recognizing what the concerns were gonna be when COVID-19 hit. So we've been able to onboard 367 patients since COVID hit. The vast majority of these were onboarded remotely. So the patient didn't even have to come to clinic in order to get on the system. We actually converted more than 1,100 visits to virtual visits. We've done more than 400 uh, medication titrations all remotely. We're using it in an integrated care pathway to try to enable early discharge from a hospital. And we're also using it in our bad patients, again, trying to mitigate unnecessary exposure to COVID uh, by a hospital visit. Where are we going? Well, we're very interested in the possibility of medley AI and how we can maybe improve the algorithm and reduce the number of false positives. So the question was, if we actually look at all of the information that's available on patients uh, with our digital cardiovascular health platform, plus the traditional daily measurements, could we create a different algorithm that would be new and improved? So the objective is to determine if a machine learning algorithm can reduce the false positive alerts without sacrificing safety, because that might allow us to scale one nurse to 400 patients. Um, and we're very excited. This is a Pathfinder project with Bo Wang and Vector Institute. And the preliminary results suggest that we might have some good news. So we have a virtual clinic. This has been part of our response to COVID. For the patients that were very low risk, we remotely onboarded them onto Medley. We deferred their appointment. We've started to catch up on some of those visits, which have been done virtually. For patients that needed up titration of medication, we added medley to remote titration, often with a telemedicine visit through OTN or with a telephone visit as per the patient preference. And this has allowed us to do a remarkable job at increasing medications. For those that are more intermediate risk, we really want the virtual visits. We want to be able to see the patients. And we do have to remember that virtual visits don't replace in-person visits. So we've been able to use the virtual visits with Medley and the information from Medley to help triage the patients that are actually sicker. 
So I feel like we've got the music of managing heart failure. We're starting to make tremendous inroads. We've added titration to it for safety and efficacy. And I think we have a very promising future. Thank you very much.